This is training for Speech and Presentation Center tutors from the ALCC. The ALCC is the American Language and Culture Center, the Intensive English Program at Southern Utah University. My name is Mark Pacino. I'm an ALCC instructor. So first I'm going to talk about some issues in dealing with ESL students that are probably the same as the students who come to see you from other departments. Um, so ESL students, just like anyone else, need to make some planned speeches, that is, uh, speeches where they're free to write their remarks down in advance. Sometimes these will, have, these will have slides, sometimes they won't. They can also be called upon to make impromptu speeches, which are speeches where uh, the remarks are not planned or written down. Sometimes they'll be allowed to have note cards or things like that, and sometimes not. Uh, my rule of thumb is just to know what your students are being asked to do, okay? Um, just like you would ask any other student, okay? So ESL students also, when they make slides, they need help designing good slides with helpful visuals, not just, you know, uh, conglomerations of clip arts and text that's large and readable, not too much text, not too small text, text that's not too similar to the background color of the slide. These are not any different from anyone else who comes to see you, I presume. Um, ESL students may also need help with uh, how to use the software that they're being asked to use, including you know, QuickTime, Flipgrid, Screencast-O-Matic, whatever it is, um, ask to see the prompt that the students have, and that'll usually tell them how they're supposed to submit their, um, their speeches. And they might, again, also be called to, to record them live in class or just make them live in class. Students might also have a problem with using, um, let's see, the submission tools like Flipgrid, which is now called Flip, or Canvas. Students might, know how to how, might not know how to submit large files, might not know how to reduce a file size, etc. And again, I presume these are the same as anyone who comes to the Speech and Presentation Center. So, um, when in doubt, ask to see the prompt. Our students will always have a prompt on Canvas or Google Classroom, so just ask to see that to make sure uh, you and the student are on the same page. And uh, answering the prompt, just like anyone else who comes to your center, is, is a really important part of that student's grade. Um, and something that might be a particular concern for ESL students is just making sure they're not skipping the parts that they didn't understand. For example, if the prompt says, resubmit if necessary, students might not understand what resubmit means or something like that, okay? So, on to some ESL-specific issues, and these are the issues that we expect will be different from most of the students who go to the Speech and Presentation Center. Um, I'm going to talk about lower order issues just because the higher order issues, the issues like having a topic sentence or um, knowing who your audience is, etc., are likely to be the same as anyone else who comes to the, to the Speech and Presentation Center. The lower order issues are things that are more the nuts and bolts of language um, that are, again, likely to be different for someone whose language background is not English. Um, the rules of thumb for me uh, that I want you guys to, to keep in mind are address them only to the degree that you are comfortable. Don't feel like you have to use a lot of gram grammatical meta language like, you know, subject, verb, predicate, etc. if you don't know them and you're not comfortable using them. Um, focus on demonstrating rather than explaining, and this ties into the first point. Um, rather than explaining what was wrong, show them the right way to do it and focus on issues that hit, uh, that hit it, oh, sorry, inhibit understanding or hinder understanding. I think I was trying to say those two words at the same time. Um, not so much on the things that sound different from you or the way that you might say it. Focus on the things that legitimately make their speech hard to understand, okay? So these are likely to fall into these three categories, pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. The goal here for all three of these is to be understood, for the student to be understandable, not to be perfect. You don't want them to sound like they're from Cedar City, necessarily. Um, you don't want them to even sound like they grew up somewhere in the United States. Um, that's a very far off goal. You know, someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger has spoken English for like three quarters of his life now and he still doesn't sound like a native speaker. That's normal. That's what you should expect. So the goal is not to sound like an American. Okay. Um, so for all three of these, the rule of thumb is going to be um, ex demonstrating rather than explaining. So in, instead of explaining an error in grammar, if you see an error in grammar, focus on recasting it. Say it the way that you would say it. Ask them to repeat. Demonstrate instead of telling, <clears throat> telling them, for example, their verb was in the wrong tense or something like that. Okay, Just say it the way that you would expect someone to say it in that situation. Okay. Um, one issue that's very likely to come up, especially with our current student population, is the verb endings. Again, the rule of thumb is um, focus on things that inhibit understanding, focus on things that uh, will make the student difficult to understand. So, um, 
So if you have a difference between a verb ending that makes a difference in meaning, for example, play versus played, uh, focus on that rather than one that doesn't make a difference in meaning. For example, he have or she have, which is still understandable um, because it's it's still in the present tense and there's no difference in meaning, even though it's not the way um, English grammar dictates that that should be said. Okay. Um, so in our current student populations, which are mostly French and Chinese speakers, these endings, verb endings, uh, regardless of whether they are meaningful or not, may not be articulated in the case of French speakers or may just be forgotten or neglected in the case of Chinese speakers. So keep in mind, these are uh, this is very likely to be an issue in the students that you work with. Okay. So uh, with vocabulary, um, the rule of thumb still applies. Focus on the things that inhibit understanding. If there's a word that you don't understand, ask them to spell it. Um, you know, stop them at a place that you feel is appropriate and ask them what that word was. Um, it might be a word that, you know, is, is just being pronounced in a way that you don't understand. For example, the word minor in French is meaner, right, or, or something similar to that. Um, so you might not understand it if they say it like that. There are also in, let's see, especially in the case of French or, or Spanish, false friends, which are words that have a common origin and look similar to English words but have different meanings. Um, for example, a French speaker said in a paper recently to me, one of my students said uh, he played basketball like a debutante. Debutante in English, I mean, is a word, but it means something different than it means in French. And in French, it means something like beginner. So keep an ear out for those. Um, they might be words that are superficially similar to English words, but have different meanings. And the student might not be aware of that. Okay. So on to pronunciation. Again, focus on things that inhibit understanding rather than things that just sound a little bit off to you. Okay. Um, in the spirit of explaining by way of demonstrating, which is to say demonstrating rather than explaining, it's more helpful to students to, to hear comparisons with other sounds rather than have detailed explanations of what their, their tongues and their lips should be doing when they make, make a particular sound. So if, if, for example, a student is pronouncing this word G-R-O-W-N as ground, you can say it has the vowel in go, or the same sound as go, or not down. So it sounds like go, grow, groan, not ground. Okay, so a demonstration is, is more helpful than an explanation. Okay, um, students might also have issues with sentence stress. Sentence stress is the, the particular English habit of making certain words stand out in a, in a sentence by... Uh, increasing the volume or, or the uh, the tone of the word. So like on the other hand, like that. So um, again, focus on this if it's inhibiting understanding. Uh, you might want to say, this is the important word, so make that one stand out on the other hand and ask them to repeat, right? Something like this, okay. Um, the same thing can happen in words. So students, especially if they have a background in another Romance language, sorry, English is not a Romance language, but in, an, in a Romance language like um, French or Spanish, they might have words that are superficially similar to English but have a different stress. So instead of national, it's national or something like that. So again, um, only explain this if it's inhibiting understanding. And when you do, you might just want to say, say it like me, national, national, okay, rather than explaining, getting into detail about, you know, intonation and things like that. Okay, so that's it for this training video. Yeah, that's what I just said. Um, so let me just say, the ALCC appreciates very much uh, what you guys do for our students. It's very helpful for our students to hear things from someone who's closer to their own age than their instructors, and it makes a big difference in uh, how they how they conceive of the, the activity of making speeches in class, right? So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email address is right here, and uh, look forward to working with you.